Hello, welcome everybody. Welcome NHA members and friends. Welcome to our Power Your Health Q&A. This is our second time that we're meeting together with a special guest speaker who is going to answer your questions about health, about um, exercise and various things. And tonight we've got Brittany Giroudi with us who uh, Mark Huberman, our NHA president, is going to introduce here shortly. But I'm just going to give you a quick uh, rundown of what we're going to do tonight and how you can interact with us. So number one, welcome so much. We're so excited that you're here. We're excited that you signed up for our Power Your Health Q&A. It happens every month, fourth Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Next month is November, so we're going to have it a week early um, because of Thanksgiving in the United States. So it'll be on the 16th, 4 p.m. Eastern. Come back here for Dr. Clapper is going to come and talk to us about climate change and a bunch of really cool stuff. So if you haven't signed up yet, we'll pop the link uh, into the chat for you guys to check out as well. But definitely hang out, comment below, tell us where you're coming from. I see some people popping on, so definitely comment below. Tell us where you're coming from. Get Tell us your name, what you're excited about. And we've got some questions that Brittany's going to answer, but definitely you can go ahead and pop in some more questions as we go throughout the evening, and we'll answer as much as we possibly can for you. So without further ado, I'm going to let Mark and Brittany come on and take it away. Thanks, Michelle. And welcome, Brittany, almost. Um, I am Mark Huberman. I'm the NHA president. And there is Brittany. And it is a real treat. This is a real treat for me because uh, Brittany and I, we've got to know, we, even, though, even though we're neighbors, she's in Pittsburgh, I'm in Youngstown. Uh, we, we've really come to know each other. We've become family over the last couple of years. Uh, one of the best things about Brittany is that uh, her husband has the same name as me. And he's a great guy. And when, they, when she says she is the Giroudi family uh, uh, YouTube channel, there is a Giroudi family. It's her and Mark, and they're great people. And uh, again, and what's also a special treat is Brittany is not only uh, a uh, YouTube sensation and a sensation within our whole food plant-based uh, movement uh, that we have, but she's also an NHA board member. And that's really a, a privilege for us. And she drives a lot of people to, um, to uh, become members of the NHA and subscribe to Health Science Magazine. And for that, we are eternal, eternally grateful. In the, so, Brittany, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our privilege. Uh, you know, for, for those of you that um, that haven't watched her video, uh, at she kicked off our 2021 conference with the Brittany story. That was pretty amazing. She had a before a, a remarkable before and after picture and story, but it was really, um, uh, she really, uh, our conference, I like to say that our 2021 conference was bookended amazingly well. <laughs> But Brittany did this really inspiring uh, presentation to kick us off on, uh, I believe it was Friday afternoon. And then we concluded with Michael Clapper on Sunday afternoon. Uh, and that video that if, if those of you that have signed up for this, you had the opportunity to watch it for free. Uh, and you'll have that same opportunity uh, before Dr. Clapper's uh, presentation here, or his appearance here next month to watch his. It's one of the most, his is one of the most impressive videos you'll ever see on on life and the climate and the imperative of our diet and lifestyle. So, but we'll talk more about Dr. Clapper later. This is Brittany's hour. So let's uh, go. Brittany, just again, for those that haven't watched the video, how about a little thumbnail introduction of Brittany Giroudi? Yeah, so I um, started this lifestyle about five years, a little over five years ago, and it just was at a point in my life where I really needed to get serious about my health, even just at 25. I was starting to have a lot of health issues with high blood pressure and high cholesterol. And I had a C-reactive protein level that was dangerously high um, that I found out about and was morbidly obese. I was 80 pounds heavier than I am today. Just not the way you really want to live your life. Well, or that tall either, right? So you're 80 yeah. pounds. Even 80 pounds is a lot for... Yeah, definitely morbidly obese. Um, I'm only 4'11 in height, so very short. Um, and just not the way you really want to start life <laughs> when you get done with school and live your life in general. So I was um, blessed to find uh, Forks Over Knives documentary. And it was like the the producer in that documentary was 
but had numbers that were better than mine, but still bad. And it just like was speaking to me. And so it just made sense. I really wanted to avoid cancer and heart disease. And so I thought, you know, with the work from Dr. Esselstyn and from Dr. Campbell, um, I just jumped into it with two feet and have been doing it ever since. That's great. And you, and when did you launch the, uh, the Giroudi family YouTube channel? Uh, probably about two years after I wanted to, I was under the impression whenever I wanted to be really serious about um, being whole food plant based and really educate myself. So I didn't, didn't document it going through it. I kind of waited until I felt confident and, and seasoned and, um, you know, I've stuck to it since the day I started. I never went back to it. It kind of, you know, I just kind of jumped in and, and didn't have any oopses or slips. But I wanted to make sure I was, you know, at a healthy weight, off my blood pressure medication, um, had great blood work, and really felt confident in the science that I was sharing with others and, and inform. So it, it took me about two years after. But the amazing thing is, uh, I guess your your success wasn't just um, a temporary one. This is long term now. Long term. Yep. I've been since the day it was a day before Easter when I started. I've been doing it ever since. And, um, you know, it's, I always kind of said, there's a lot of stressful things that happened in my life in this five years. And if I was going to slip or go back to old habits, it would have happened and it hasn't happened. So I'm just, um, I think for me, it's knowing the science and, you know, it just does makes sense to me to eat this way and live my life this way. So I don't, I would never go back to no, it's kind of way. Where, where I relate to that a little bit is that I was literally raised in this diet lifestyle from day one. Um, so I really, to me, it was kind of an article of faith and almost religion, the way I was brought up by my parents. But what's so impressive to me is to see the validation scientifically and lifestyle and for the planet, everything that's done, to, that my life has been a validation of all those principles. And, and every day we're learning more and more and more. It just yeah. validates. In fact, I think what I find so interesting is we're going through COVID right now is that what everybody agrees on in COVID, regardless of what you think about vaccinations and, and whether, you, whether you think it's beneficial or harmful, um, the one thing everybody agrees on is that the people that are most at risk of COVID are those with comorbidities that are obese, that have all of these kinds of problems, yet nobody talks about that. We do in the NHA, and fortunately, Dr. Clapper and you know the voices that we have, and that's what you do. You tell people that you really can build your immunity, really protect yourself uh, largely from this, from this pandemic, not just of, of, uh, of, the, uh, of the epidemic of, of uh, COVID, but of heart disease and diabetes. It is a diet for all reasons. Yeah. I mean, it, it proof, proof was in my numbers, how I feel. And um, every year when I get my blood tests and, and just, you know, it's, it's remarkable how much inflammation I've got rid of in my body. And, um, you know, it just really reduces your risk for everything. So it makes so much sense to, to eat this way and live this way. You, ever, you still look in the mirror sometimes and say, who was that back then? <laughs> who am I now? Uh, not so much anymore, but at the, you know, the first couple of years, definitely, or, you know, we'll pull up a picture, a picture will come up on a memory and, and it'll, I'll almost look at it. Like I don't recognize myself. So that's um, really been nice to be a little far out from from where I started time wise. Well, we, uh, we want to get to some of the questions, uh, the number of the questions that people have asked. Um, but just before I do, uh, a question that I have is, were you a chef? Were you a trained chef? I mean, you do all these cooking things. What's the background of that? Did you go to the culinary school of something? I did not. <laughs> um, I always like to dabble, but definitely not a chef. When I got married, I would go grocery shopping and buy like the packets of sauce that you would just add whatever protein to it. And then, you know, it would be dinner. Um, so I really love being creative in the kitchen. And I feel like, you know, I pivoted to this completely different way of eating. And I wanted to get my family on board and other family members that I love. And I wanted my husband to do it too with me. And so I found that as I got more creative with the way I cook, more people liked it and found it interesting. So um, definitely not a trained chef at all. Uh, but my background's in art. So I, I always say that my, instead of making a painting, it's kind of like using my creativity now with food. So it's just another way of 
of art to me. And um, how many how 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 many sh how many YouTube shows do you do? Do you do one a week? Do you do one a month? How does it work? Yeah, so I would like to do two a week, um, but I also work full time. So I work Monday through Friday, you know, normal 40 hours plus a week. So unfortunately, lately, it's been a little bit less, but at least one a week, I definitely try to get out. Um, and hopefully, we're also moving next year. So, so half of my house is in boxes right now. So hopefully, as we get closer to the move, or when we do move, I'll get on a little bit better of a of a schedule, but at least once a week, there's something new to check out. Did you design your new home with uh, with uh, a cooking kitchen in mind? I did, I did. I'm very thoughtful, thought out of how it's gonna look for filming and for um, taking photographs and different things like that. So there's a lot of windows and a lot of a lot of uh, light to be to be desired in that space. And I also have an office, so my background for next year will be much nicer than it is now with my house kind of half in boxes. So Absolutely. you'll be a healthy kid in a candy store, huh? <laughs> Definitely. I love it. All right, well, let's get to a couple of questions. Uh, I got one, this is kind of an interesting one, but I do hear this from time to time. Do you ever uh, pre-soak or sprout your uncooked beans, especially whole lentils, to make them more digestible? I have bought sprouted, um, sprouted lentils, or I, ha I have done that in the past. Um, when I remember, I like to, but sometimes out of convenience, I just use regular, but... I definitely so, don't shy away from getting sprouted. So I was just making one of my favorite recipes is uh, Kathy Fisher's uh, no tuna salad. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that and I'm not, an, I want as much better at this than me. So I don't even, I barely know how to use the instant pot. So I was, I, I went to, to, to the cookbook or one of these things that on the instant pot, there's a little card that tells you how many, how much water and how much beans. And in reading about it, cause Wanda wasn't home, it said, you know, it recommends that you soak them first. Mm -hmm. That makes them they'll cook quicker. So what's, is there any advantage to just putting dry beans in an instant pot rather than soaking them overnight? Or I think it, it speeds up the process of cooking. Um, and, you know, I think for some people that have digestive problems, it probably could help. But, you know, I'm all about convenience too. So I don't, sometimes we use canned, no salt canned beans. Um, sometimes I cook them from dry. It just kind of depends on, I, for me, it really is more about just getting in beans. Um, so if I have time, I love to sprout. If not, I, you know, the cans, can of no salt added beans works great too. You find that uh, when you when you cook the beans yourself from dried beans, they taste a little better. They do, and you can control like what you season them as. Um, so yeah, if you definitely have the time, I find that you can. There's tons of recipes out there that can make them unique. So especially if people don't like beans, that's a really great avenue to kind of kind of go down because they definitely can taste, you know, super flavorful with whatever you add. And from what you've read, is there some nutritional value that Dr. Greger or other people say about sprouting some of your grains like that? Yeah, I think I think you definitely get a little bit of extra nutritional value from it. And, um, you know, it's great to get in. It's, and, and especially if you can eat broccoli sprouts, um, that's super you know, nutritious and great for fighting cancer and everything else. So um, I always try to get in broccoli sprouts at least once a week uh, into my diet. But um, but yeah, I'm 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 still learning all the sprouting techniques as well. So it's 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 fun. Once you're whole food plant based, there's so many avenues to kind of play with, and I feel like sprouts are a whole whole avenue to kind of be adventurous with. So speaking of uh, plant based chefs, uh, Tiffany Wilkerson, I just saw on the screen popped up a question, and I don't know where the question. There it is, Brittany. <laughs> Where can you see that? It says Brittany. Can you see the question? I do. Oh, so why don't you answer the question? Um, what do I see for the next five to ten years? Um, I would just love to be doing what I'm doing now. I, you know, get so much joy when somebody sends me an email saying I help them, or on Facebook, someone makes a recipe and they had their grandkids or kids try it and it worked out well for them. So I just want to keep doing this for as long as people want to keep watching and 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 being a part of the group. Um, you know, we're talking about starting a family. So hopefully in the next couple of years, the Drudy family will become a bigger family. And, um, you know, then promoting whole food plant based for kids and pregnancy and all of that would kind of it's kind of my vision for the next couple of years. <laughs> so back to some. Well, thank you, Tiffany. And by the way. Uh, Tiffany Wilkerson is amazing in and of herself, 
and in the the hot off the presses fall 2021 issue of health science if you go right into the middle there are beautiful recipes by our very own tiffany wilkerson so that's one reason alone to get the fall 2021 issue of health science magazine so thank you tiffany for your question and for jumping in so another nuts and bolts question for you Brittany. what is your favorite sauce for chinese stir fry and is there a recipe you can share for that is there one you buy or one you make yeah, I've been really into making different kind of sauces using hummus. I feel like it's kind of an undervalued sauce addition more than just hummus as you think on a sandwich or, or as a spread or a dip. Um, so I really like mixing hummus and balsamic vinegars. And you can find all different kind of flavored balsamic vinegars out there. I know Cal uh, California balsamic has a teriyaki flavor. So it may sound weird to mix hummus with that, but that is a fantastic stir fry. You could also add in like extra garlic or um, ginger if you wanted to. So I kind of get really creative with that combo and it's been really doing it for us lately. Um, and then, you know, we do the same thing with salad dressings. You know, I might throw in a sweet balsamic into the hummus and that works great as well. So uh, speaking of stir fries and, and sauces, you know, one of the things that, that I know that in the vegan world, people have used historically are soy sauces. Yeah. Right? Soy is, you know, it's vegan and all that. But soy sauces can be really high in sodium. So do yeah. you have any tips for people that want to use a soy sauce or something like that that's a better, uh, a better option, a lower sodium option for, for your stir fries or to have that kind of flavor? Yeah, it's hard because even the ones that are like labeled like the liquid aminos that you think are low sodium really are not. The serving size is different in them. They're much smaller. So they kind of trick you advertisement wise um, to think that they're less sodium. So, you know, really for us, I really do live like an SOS free lifestyle. So I don't really use any of that stuff. Um, and, and for the salt substitute, most times I'll use white miso. And uh, that's from Dr. Greger. You know, his research has shown that miso doesn't mess up your blood pressure or cardiovascular. So sometimes a little bit of miso, I find, can kind of curve that. Um, so, you know, I think doing try the hummus and the teriyaki uh, flavored balsamic and see if that can do it. But there, it's really hard because there's not really a product out for that. Maybe we could talk to Dylan from Well Your World to make one. He, 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 he <laughs> so, made well. I think the I think the coconut aminos are one of the lowest, isn't it? Yeah, I would say that that's probably as good as you're going to find in a grocery store. Another question we got from uh, one of our YouTubers, perhaps uh, from Barbara Perlis. Please explain the whole food plant based journey. What was it like for your husband, for Mark? Yeah, so he at first I think thought I was a little crazy because, like I said, we watched the you know we watched Forks Over Knives together the day before Easter, and then I kind of made that line in the sand where I was like. I'm doing this 100%. I don't care if you're going to do it with me. I need to do something for my health. This is going to be my ticket. I'm all in. So, you know, I showed up to Easter and my family eats, you know, there's ham and everything else you can think of. And, um, you know, for him, he was never a really big meat eater. I would say I think cheese was kind of his last, last thing to get rid of. Um, he comes from a Middle Eastern background, so they already had lots of lentils and dates and whole grains in his diet. Uh, must, have so, loved must have loved hummus. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, hummus with pretty much every meal still to this day is what is what he has. You should see you should see the amounts of hummus in our fridge at all times. Um, so it was really just cheese that kind of took him a little bit of time, but. You know, I find that I found that as I educated him and I sent him little things to watch, like I sent him Dr. Greger's podcast and he started doing it on his own on his way to work. Um, it all really made sense to him. And and I would say about six months after I went, he decided to go as well. And he's been doing it ever since with me. Well, he's got to be one of the luckiest guys <laughs> in the world because <laughs> you make everything. And he, he I'm sure he gets to taste test it all right. He does. He does. I'm he he's very um, he's very active and uh, has a great metabolism. So I always say like, I, you know, he he eats like nonstop everything I make. <laughs> Lucky him. So speaking of hummus, before we leave that subject. So from it's hard to find an oil free hummus. Mm -hmm. Engine two, 
Rip Esselstyn he, uh, Rip had one, but I don't. I think then they lost the license. They may be getting that back. But other than his, are you aware of anybody else's that you can buy that's oil free? Yeah. Um, there's oil free ones, but then if it's if it's oil free, then it has a lot of salt in it sometimes. So that's the trade off. Um, I know a couple brands are oil free. Like um, I think Cedar makes one that's oil free, uh, and a couple other ones like locally from Pittsburgh. But the sodium again was so, it ends up being pretty pretty high. So I find that it's pretty easy just to make on your own and you can make large batches and freeze it. And um, then you can also, you know, make it flavorful and add what you'd like to it. So most times we just make it ourselves. So does Mark have a favorite hummus? He, he really likes pepper red. Guy, yeah. Guy? He really likes red pepper hummus. Me so, too. No wonder yeah. I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine too. Yeah. Rip Esselson, he made a good roasted red yeah. pepper hummus. I was very sad when that went away. Me too. Well, hopefully it's coming back. A lot of his product line is coming back. And and uh, I think he's able to, originally it was all licensed to Whole Foods. Right. Uh, but now I think he's doing it himself. So long may that continue. And again, it's only a matter of time before Dylan mm -hmm. Holmes is. Uh, yeah. Because um, he's got, uh, he's his, have you had Dylan's uh, pasta sauces? I have. We've oh. had, we've yeah. had a couple of his products and everything we've tried, we've really enjoyed. That's right. All right. Let's see what else I got. Um, can you suggest super quick meals that don't make a ton of food? My freezer is small and my husband doesn't really like left leftovers. Oh, no. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of my recipes are for families of four to six, you know, depending on serving size is kind of what I target. Um, you could always, you know, cut the recipe in half is kind of my suggestion. But um, actually on on Sunday coming up, I'm going to have a book cookbook all on weight loss come out and they're all two servings sizes so they're going to be for kind of like the like if you're at home and you're the only one doing this trying to lose weight and get healthy with whole food plant-based it's kind of designed for that so um i would say stay tuned for sunday uh when the ebook comes out that's awesome all right let's see what else i got uh what are your top ways of flavoring food now that you're sos free i think you touched on that a moment ago but what are yeah. your ways of flavoring seasonings are like going to be your best friends. Um, we get, I literally have, we were talking about this the other day for the new house is that, you know, I'm like, oh, I really need like a whole door or a whole pantry just for our seasonings. We use smoked paprika, thyme, garlic, onion, black pepper. Um, you know, I tried to sneak in turmeric when I can, but really making it flavorful and then playing around with different blends, like um, Italian seasoning is big in our house. We also really like Herbs de Provence blend that comes out around kind of Thanksgiving flavors. Um, and then, you know, I do use a tiny bit of, of white miso paste and that helps a little bit, but be adventurous with all of the different spices out there. We, uh, we also found a lemon curry, which the Pittsburgh uh, Food Co-op carries. They have a whole bulk bin spice section. And um, it's just amazing really what you can kind of even find online, different blends to try. And I suppose there's Mrs. Dash that you can find yeah. at every grocery store and Benson's you can order yep. from wherever they are. So it's a, there's almost an infinite variety of, it's almost, it, it, you almost have no excuse not to yeah. have whatever traditional family or ethnic flavors you have. They're available now, salt free and with all those poultry blend, whatever you want. Yeah, and the longer you go away from not using salt, the natural flavors of food comes out and everything tastes better and richer. So um, I would say stick with it if you're, you can use like Benson's, you know, if you're transitioning, um, you know, if you need something like that. But but once you're doing this for a long time, it it's it's really easy just to flavor everything with, with spices and not worry about anything else. And not to give another plug, but we'll give another plug. Dylan Holmes yeah. has a magnificent... Uh, uh, seasoning. Yeah. Well, Mark just finished um, Galaxy Dust. We had that. <laughs> it's, on our, it's on our counter as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, it, it does amaze me growing up. And, and I grew up, uh, you may know my story. I grew up on raw foods for mm -hmm. 30, half of my life. Um, but I, I never understood that people, that I, I, I guess I often wondered if people even knew what real food tastes like. I right. go, I go to people when we have corn roasts and that, and they'd be putting butter and salt and all they said, I think, 
corn itself is pretty good, but they probably don't even remember what corn tastes like. And the same thing with potatoes. Yeah. Golden, yellow Yukon gold potatoes are like I, in your mouth, and yet they add butter, they add cream, they add everything on them. Yeah, I grew up in a house that people salted their food before they even tasted it. So, you know, I, I definitely understand that. I think the, the craziest thing I ever heard was somebody put salt on their watermelon. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that's I understand that, but that's pretty crazy. All yeah. right. Um, so speaking of what, you, what we were just talking about, taste buds, uh, a question for you transitioning to the diet and that how long did it take for your taste buds to adapt like that? to get away from those cravings that you had for the yeah. SMA. I think I would say like a month or two. Um, and really that's just me learning how to cook SOS free. I, you know, at the beginning, you know, you're not used to cooking this way. So I had a lot more flops than like this tastes amazing. It was more of, you know, kind of learning my way through it. It was like, Oh, I have to eat a salad, but I don't know what to put in it. And, and kind of that, that kind of, trying to figure it out. But, um, you know, as you get, I feel like as you get better at cooking this way, it just gets easier and then it just tastes so good. I know that we've got together a whole bunch and everyone's made a different dish for like potlucks that me and you have been at. And I mean, it's like a feast. I feel like when we're all together and everything's just tastes so good that, that no one's missing anything. So I would say about, about a month or so. You know, uh, we were talking about spices and making things taste, you know, at enhancing. Mm -hmm. the flavor of even natural foods. My mother was old school and before we had all these available spices and blends and things like that you could do. But one of her secrets was um, that she, when she would cook rice and, and soups and that she would cook rice and celery juice. Yeah. And, juice. and there was a natural sodium that you got from that. And yeah. I find, I mean, that's still one of Joel Furman. I, one of my favorite recipes of his, he has an anti-cancer soup. Hmm. The anti-cancer soup, the foundation of it is like, I don't know, five, six cups, seven to eight cups of carrot juice, of fresh carrot juice. And it gives it a sweetness. And, and it's just whole, that's as whole natural as you can get. Definitely. And a wonderful burst of flavor. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I think celery is a great thing to use, too, if you're needing a little bit of extra sodium that you're looking for. All right. So another question back to your, back to the Brittany story here is what was the hardest thing for you about going w whole food plant-based sos free i think just it was such a big switch to what i was used to it was a new it was totally new um nobody i knew was doing it i was the only person i had cousins that were that were vegan for a couple years prior um but nobody who was eating you know whole food plant-based or anything like that so I think for me, it was just kind of doing it on my own for a little bit, but really I just kind of, you know, my story is so different than a lot of other people's because I saw so many family members suffering around me. Um, you know, I had an uncle who passed away really young from heart disease. Um, you know, I watched my mom be sick, my dad be sick all growing up. So there was a pretty big fire underneath me to like do this learn as much as I can. Um, so I, I wouldn't, I don't know, I guess just doing it alone for the first six months was a little lonely, but you know, there are so many Facebook groups and the internet now, and you know, you don't have to do it alone. Even if you're the only person in your house doing it, you know, there's so much community available that I think that, you know, that hardest, it doesn't have to be so hard for my hardest part. <laughs> sure. And I'm sure, I'm sure now that you've become you know, kind of a sensation in the world and a figure you, I'm sure you get emails and calls and mm -hmm. things like that all the time, talking to people, talking about their struggles and how they do yeah. this, doing it alone can be tough. You have Mark, I have Wanda, we're, we're, we're blessed. Yeah. That we have that together, but for people who don't have that support, uh, I think you're right. You can find it. There are, there are resources available today that you can find a community of like-minded people. You can find shows like this. That you yeah, can, you can the tell. NHA, our Facebook group, um, you know, I even give out like my cell phone number for people that need it. Um, so, you know, it's like there are so many people available to you to, that want to cheer you on, want you to achieve the health that you want. Um, so I feel like, you know, you, you definitely can have a support buddy and uh, it's all available now. So another Kathy Grant has a question about, again, kind of back to how you 
not a trained chef? How did you learn to cook this way? What was the starting point for you? Was My it started, on Instagram yeah. one day and said, wow, what, this is something else? Yeah, so I kind of dived into when I first started with Forks Over Knives, um, you know, K Dr. Campbell and Dr. Usselston are pretty much the main doctors on that. And so I dived into the China study. I dived into prevent and reverse heart disease. Um, I found my way to Dr. Greger, where I learned about the Daily Dozen, and I kind of used that as a good guide of to make sure I was eating a variety of plant-based foods. Um, so, you know, I, I think getting all the cookbooks, I started with the Forks Over Knives one, you know, moved to How Not to Die, then the How Not to Die, Die book cookbook came out. Um, I got Engine 2 stuff the Prevent Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. So I literally just try to become a sponge and uh, take all the tips and tricks from everyone else that had been doing it prior to me. So have you ever taken any, have you ever taken any classes or anything on culinary arts or anything, or it's just all self-taught? I haven't, yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's just a lot of experimenting on Mark. <laughs> if I remember right too, didn't you, uh, when the How Not to Die Cookbook came out or sometime after, you made, like one of his recipes, a mother, all of his recipes, you did something and there are videos of all of those, right? Yeah. When I started YouTube, um, you know, I had the camera, but starting to make, starting to record yourself can be a little intimidating and then putting yourself online. So I was trying to think of how I wanted to start it. So I started with Gregor's How Not to Die cookbook, the first one that came out. And in the back of his book, he kind of has, I think it's a 21 or 30 day meal plan where he talks about which recipes from the cookbook to make for day one, day two. I did to day six and then decided to stop because it became too complicated to film the whole day. But um, yeah, that kind of was my starting point to YouTube. Somebody once said, uh, Jeff Novick, who's a, just a mm -hmm. legend in our uh, health movement as a registered dietitian in that, said that um, some people make this way too complicated. Yeah. I think for most people, there's like seven things that people like. They find what they like, and that's what they make, and 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 don't get intimidated by a thousand cookbooks and a recipe a day and all that. Do you find you and Mark find there's you're always making things, so yeah. that's a part of what you do. But mm -hmm. are there a, a bunch of staple things that you and Mark do every day that you like? You wake up your your overnight oatmeal, or you wake up you make your patented salad. Yeah, I mean, I think breakfast and lunch pretty much are the same every day. And then dinner, I sometimes get creative with for the channel. Um, but, you know, like breakfast most days is oatmeal. In the summer, I like to do raw oats, um, more cereal style. And then, you know, once it becomes kind of cold like it is now, I kind of move to still cut oats and or oat groats and make it, you know, warm. And, and that's really nice. And I change up the fruit, whichever is in season. And then lunch, I do like a big giant chopped salad, um, kind of like Dr. Furman style. And, uh, you know, dinner can kind of be fun and different. So for me, it, it does get very, um, you know, it's nice to have at least two meals that are kind of routine. And then on the weekends, we might change it up and have a smoothie for breakfast. And then that's a little bit different and fun. But yeah, I do. I do find that I'm I I like routine, especially when you're busy doing a bunch of things. Yeah, I find that too that when you have um, overnight oats or you have oatmeal for mm -hmm. breakfast, it sustains you. Yeah. Just if you cut some fruit in there, and if you and if you um, add a plant based milk or something, and you add grind up some chia seeds, and it just sustains you. You're really. Yeah, and it's nice to do like, like for example, for the summer when it's really hot and I might not feel like doing hot oatmeals, you know, doing overnight oats is great because you can have that cold or, you know, even kind of a quick version is just to put rolled oats that are raw and put your plant milk on top of that with whatever fruit and nuts and seeds. And then that's like you can, it's pretty much like cereal um, that you can enjoy. And then, you know, I usually, again, like something a little bit warm whenever the weather starts to tank here in Pittsburgh. So it's really nice to have, you know, it's the same, you're eating oats, but there's so many different ways that it can be, you know, fun. And then you can make even like uh, we make an oat cookie with it's just oats and bananas that you mix together with a little flax meal. And then those are great to take if you're hiking or on the go. So you really can do, I mean, I love being whole food plant-based because it really doesn't feel restrictive. It's like endless possibilities that you can make. Isn't that, the point, isn't that the point that I, I think for the, the world outside of our world, yeah. people think it is so restrictive, so narrow, you're so extreme. 
And it's just the opposite. The if power I, is, almost yeah. un, is almost limitless. I mean, if I had enough hours in the day and I can, you know, people ask me like, how do you keep coming up with stuff? And, you know, we put out five extra recipes each month for our private membership group. And, um, you know, like it literally, I could just, I could sit here for like a month and write out like ideas for recipes. It's just endless with what you can do. You wake up in the middle of the night. And go, oh, I, that's a nice idea. You Sometimes. Say, yeah, I have say, hey, what do you think a, couple, of this? a couple of notebooks all around the house. I got gotcha. you. And um, oh, but just a question before we leave the oatmeal thing. From your research on all this, is there any uh, greater nutritional value of old-fashioned oats versus steel-cut oats versus oat groats? Yeah, I definitely think beneficial? it's definitely better to have it more whole. You know, if you can have it in its original form, like oat groats, that's you know you get a gold star, and that's great. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I think it's still better to get to get rolled oats, you know, if you're going to get oats in at some point, if that's what you like, or, you know, if you don't have as much time to make oat groats. So I just always try to do a variety. And then two, I, I don't really worry about, you know, all I didn't get oat groats. I took, I had, um, you know, rolled oats today. It's more of, more of what makes it sustainable and enjoyable. So for me, I just kind of switch it up. I love the groats and I also love uh, rolled you know, whatever I can get in. Got it. Um, there's a question. Barbara Perlis had a question there. Oh, yes. Loved your YouTubes when you did a recipe from different cookbooks. Are you going to continue that concept? Yeah. So I, I kind of got mixed reviews on that. Um, you know, I plan on sharing some more of people that come out. I think for me, whenever I started my YouTube channel, the biggest my biggest mission statement, yes, I had a mission statement, was to help others and promote this lifestyle. And I also think that the whole food plant-based community is so wonderful that we can help promote each other and, and you know, different things that you find. So for me, it was so much fun sharing like, you know, Brenda Davis's book, Nourish, and books maybe for young families or people that are pregnant, um, you know, verse, you know, Engine 2, that might be awesome if you have a young young son at home that's set in college that might be more targeted towards them. So um, yes, hopefully I will continue that just right now. It's been more focusing on a couple different projects. So would you give a, a little plug for Brittany Giroudi? You said you have your private group that people can. Yeah. So what do you offer that people can go over and above your free YouTube channel? Yeah. So some people were asking how they could help, help, you know, they wanted to help send me money for groceries or they wanted to help support us in some way. So I started a private membership where, um, you know, people could pay, you know, a small amount and then I could give them extra recipes and a couple other things. So in our group, every month I come out with five SOS free whole food plant based recipes. Um, I know Wanda tried the pumpkin roll for you we, guys. <laughs> we tried the pumpkin roll. Yeah. And it was really good. We tried it. Yeah, yeah. She told me she made it and it looked That's awesome. Packed That's, it's and, packed. Um, so simple and it's packed with play with flavor. Yeah. So fun things like fun recipes that are on there. And then I also do an art project that's kind of a relaxation because I think, you know, whole food plant based, we talk so much about the food, but it's also about exercise. It's also about stress. It's also about, you know, community. So there are other things too that are important for your health just besides the food. So I try to give that. Um, we do an extra video. There's a live cooking class, a music playlist. And then it's just a great community, too, where people can, you know, I'm available pretty much all the time to people. So they can just I am me and, and and we can talk. So I try to put a lot into that into that group as well. I can, tell, I can attest to the fact for everybody watching. You are you. What you see on Brittany on TV is what you see when you're when you're just sitting around a table as we do having a picnic lunch. So uh, she is who she is. Uh, Laura Morrison has a question. What is your favorite go to salad dressing? Yeah, so I talked about the hummus and balsamic that that has been it um, lately. It's been one fourth cup of hummus. Uh, and then I like to do a, around a tablespoon to two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar vinegar that's flavored. So right now I've been really into a cinnamon pear uh, flavoring, and that's from a local place here in Pittsburgh. Um, a lot of balsamic places you can find in your area. So we actually have one about 10 minutes from my home that I, uh, I frequent pretty often. And then I sometimes like to do a little add of, of mustard to that. And that's such a nice combination of creaminess, 
um, sweetness. And then, you know, it gets to be a really nice thick dressing more than, than just adding in the balsamic on its own. My go-to one is, I think you've probably sampled, is I have a citrus tahini that I think maybe yeah. take Kathy Fisher that's just equal parts of orange yeah. juice, lemon juice, lime juice, uh, half a cup of tahini, a few cashews and a shallot. And away yeah. you go. And, it's just, and I'm, sure, I'm sure that consistency is probably pretty similar. It is. And you can make it thicker or thinner depending yep. on what you do. So it's good. All right. Uh, Tiffany, Tiffany has another question for you. Tiffany says, do you have a favorite or a specific type of date that you like to use when cooking or baking. I grew up when I never even heard of medjool dates. Deglet yeah. Moore dates was all the natural health foods and barbell center ever sold. Now there's an infinite number of dates. What's the go-to date for cooking? Yeah, so most times I buy um, medjool dates, which are a little bit larger. Um, I just find that they're more abundant at the places I grocery shop. So most times I'll find those, but I was talking about this in another um, another class that you know there are even date farms that you can order online. So I do suggest trying out, there's a bunch of them, like Seven Hot Dates is one I've bought from before. And you can try different varieties that, you know, you maybe have never heard before. And I do tell do tell people to try to get them as a wet pack. They're so gooey, like caramel. I think I actually sent you guys one, um, one year. Did I send you guys dates one time? I might have. I don't remember. Um, I know. Was, yeah. A fresh date were, were really yeah. good. You can you can definitely get them online and, and ship to your home. And so we get like kind of a variety pack, usually around the holidays, because that's kind of like our candy. And, uh, you know, I always like to order ones that I never see in the grocery store. But well, we, every- we, we go organic and at Costco, yeah. that's the best place that I've found. You can find organic, yeah. beautiful medjool dates for like, I think, nine dollars for two pounds. And yeah. Beautiful. And they, I mean, you don't really need that much in a lot of recipes. So they last a long time. They do. Oh, let's see. There's a bunch of people in the chats here uh, talking about also uh, uh, Gina points out Chef AJ's daily show and YouTube chats are also a really supportive resource. Part of the community. Chef AJ is interviewing everybody and anybody all the time. She is a great resource. Brittany, Shirley Ann Mooney wants to know, how do you plan your meals for the week? How do you do that or you don't? I don't because I'm always trying new things out. So generally, I would say every week I'm trying out, you know, maybe three recipes, three to four recipes. So it just kind of depends. We have a lot of leftovers because our recipes make, you know, usually enough for anywhere from four to eight servings, depending on what it is. So I we eat a lot of leftovers. But um, yeah, I, I don't really sit down and like recipe uh, plan for the week. Uh, knowing to doing, whoever that is, they ask, what is your favorite hummus recipe? What is your, do you have a favorite? Yeah, so we have one on our channel. If you Google um, the Drudy family hummus, it'll pop up. Um, but it's a hummus recipe and we use um, sesame seeds instead of tahini. Uh, actually, to gr- it all grinds up anyway in your food processor. But it's really a lovely general hummus and then you can add I like to add in different things so sometimes I'll make more of a garlic hummus or I'll make a red pepper hummus um, we also have a dessert hummus that's coming out in the book on Sunday so I think people are going to like that one there you go so here and now so how do they pre can they pre-order this book or, or not, is when they can do it on your yeah channel? not not this time I got a little bit ahead of myself since this is the first one so this will be the fir- this will be one of three ebooks that are all on weight loss because people ask me all the time specifically about weight loss. Um, it'll be announced on Sunday everywhere if you follow us on any social media platform. Um, but uh, I am giving all of our private members a 50 off, 50% off code. So if you're in the private membership for us, you also will get it, get it half off. That's awesome. Um, so one, one, one of the questions we got in advance says, I am allergic to nuts. Mm-hmm. But so many recipes have them for sauces. What can I use to substitute nuts? Yeah, so seeds are a great option. Um, you know, pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds are great sources of zinc and, and you know, some other things that you might, you know, want to try out. And, you know, another great option is to do white beans. Um, so a lot of our recipes, you know, if we have cashews, you also can use white beans to sub for that if you're trying to look, especially people that are trying to look for a lower fat option. Um, But, you know, I would say look at seeds and then white beans for a replacement. All right. 
Let's see. We got a lot of people commenting here. Um, someone says, let's see. Uh, Brittany, oh, there you go. Batch cook. So are you a believer in batch cooking? I'm a believer. I just don't do it. Um, um, there are people online, um, like I know Tammy and Tom um, from Nutmeg Notebook, batch cook. Um, right now, maybe in the future, I'll get better at that. But right now, I'm more of a on the fly kind of person. I find that, I, again, I'm having my breakfast and lunches are pretty similar every day. Um, so I don't batch cook because it only takes me a couple minutes to do it. Uh, and then, you know, dinners are different, but the way that I make recipes up and the way that I have fun in the kitchen is kind of spontaneous in the moment. So, um, yeah, right now batch cooking, I don't do, but I commend all the people that do it. Well, I would imagine that with all the recipes you make, <laughs> you batch cook, you'd have to have like eight refrigerators or yeah. freezers to do that. Yeah. And I like trying, I like switching it up, especially for dinners, you know, to be something different. So we, uh, we do have a freezer that is very packed. Um, but you know, I try to, I just kind of more of relaxed and on the fly of what we're going to have. In, in what, what are your thoughts about steaming, boiling, um, instant potting? What, what, what are your, what are your preferred techniques for cooking things? Yeah, I think whatever way that you will enjoy vegetables is a good idea. Um, I do a variety. So I like to do raw and cooked. Uh, that's what feels good for me. So, you know, at lunch, I'm having that big giant raw salad. And then usually at dinner, I'll have something cooked. But um, I think whatever way that you can get in more vegetables is a good idea. Well, let's talk. A couple of people have asked about your favorite gadgets. Mm. So. I, I'm I'm sure you have an instant pot and a Vitamix. Yeah, I have both. I love, you know, the Vitamix is a um, can't live without. I feel like once you have a Vitamix, you can't go to something else. Uh, I just upgraded to the new Ascent series for Vitamix. And I also got the food processor, which is an eight cup that works on the base of the Vitamix. And um, can't say enough good things about that. That is my favorite, favorite gadget. I think I would have to, you know, go find one the next day if something happened. Um, you know, I use my Instant Pot, but I could probably live without that. Uh, it's nice and convenient to have. And then I also have, um, I also really like the Nutra Milk. Um, so they were nice enough to gift me one to try out. And we do make a good amount of nut butters and nut milks from it. So that's um, that's been really fun to play with as well. And, uh, you know, there's another gadget, which I don't, which we just got. I don't know whether you're familiar with it from Vitamix. Their composter. It's oh, really, yeah. This is an amazing device. It fits on your countertop. It's maybe uh, maybe 18 inches by 18 inches square. Something yeah. like that. I, I couldn't quite figure out what it would do, but it's got this, like, probably the size of, like, a three or a four-quart Instant Pot container. Yeah. You just take your vegetables in there. You, you put them in there. And it has like a, a, a like a storage can you keep on your on your countertop with like a filter so you don't get the odors or flies or anything like that. You put it in this machine, and it dries it and, and almost virtually silent. It yeah. dries it, it grinds it, uh, and it turns it into like literally a, a compost powder that actually even smells has a nice fragrance. And you put it in your garden. But the thing that I find so interesting about it is that again you don't. If, if you're plant-based, you have a pile of fruits yeah. and vegetables. And if you don't happen to have a compost pile in your house uh, or you don't want to go out in the winter to do that, this is an amazing device. And it, and again, just I think it, it's it got to be good for the environment yeah. and good for not putting stuff out of the trash and all of that. You no, know, it's not in plastic. and It's great. It's on my uh, Christmas wish list, so nice we'll see if place. we'll see if Mark gets it for me. There you go. I'll talk to that boy. But it is it's silent and efficient, and uh, and it's yeah. a, you know like almost everything from Vitamix. It's a they they, they make them well. It's a nice they're nice looking products as well, so they do well. Do you do you have a nut grinder? Do you have a, a nut grinder where you grind up chia yeah. seeds, flax seeds, and things like that? We have a coffee grinder that we I use just for that. So it's a great, good idea to just get a coffee grinder uh, that you can get even on Amazon. And we just, I use that for any spices or for nuts and seeds, and it just works great. Do you use a steamer or do you use just the Instant Pot for most of your cooking? Um, I have I have both. So I do steam on the stovetop 
pretty often. Very good. And by chance, do you have a champion juicer? I do not. Yeah, I still, I know. That. That's another good product. I know. I've I've seen I've seen yours in action. We have um we have the uh Yo Nana? Yeah, we have the Yo Nana's. Not the um same. Not the same. and it is not the same. I have tasted it from the champion juicer and it is better. So do you have a do you have a preferred juice machine to make carrot juice or celery juice or anything like that? Um, I've just done it in the Vitamix and then strained it and that's been okay. I haven't tried it in the Nutra milk yet, but I'm pretty sure I probably could. And do you have, again, in your experience, because again, time and time mm -hmm. is important to everybody. Um, do, do you have your preferred nut milks that you buy in the store, Elmwoods or, or Eden Soy or any that, yeah. you, that you like better than others? I definitely like all the ones you named. Um, and I feel like Elmhurst, uh, there's a lot of variety that you can find too, like hazelnut and some other ones that are a Not little bit. Not all of them are just nuts and water though. That's true. That's true. So you do have to read the ingredients. But, um, you know, I also find that I just will make it from scratch really easy. Dr. Greger has, um, you know, in hit the front of his book, he has actually a really easy nut milk recipe where you just need a blender and you just take nut butter mixed with water and it makes it and you don't have to strain it or anything. That's something, that's a tip that I learned from Chef AJ a long time yeah. ago. Rhonda told me a, one tablespoon of almond yeah. butter and a cup of water and there's your almond milk. And right. I've always been amazed that when I, when you go to the grocery store and you buy, you want to buy almond milk, Yeah. Um, you think you're buying just almond milk. That's and it's true. not. There's like 20 other ingredients in it, and you're paying four and five dollars for it. It's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. So most times we'll just do that. And then I do then when I buy it, I do like to get soy milk and, and from Weston Soy. I think that's a great, great product. Very good. Tiffany has another question for you. What called you into the profession of teaching? This is kind of a little yeah. bit of so when I was getting my bachelor's degree, I got, actually got it in fine arts photography. And, um, you know, at, at that time, I kind of wanted to do like National Geographic photographer. But um, I was I kind of got the impression that I wouldn't be able to live really in Pittsburgh if I wanted to do that. I'd probably have to move. And uh, me and my husband were um, dating at the time and his job was going to be in Pittsburgh. So. I kind of thought, like, what am I going to do with this um, bachelor's? And and so my senior year, I, I was going through my options. And I thought, you know, like, I would really love to be a teacher. And I had a really great high school um, art teacher that I loved. And so, you know, kind of pivoted to, I think I would be good at that. And um, growing up, I kind of always saw myself as being a teacher as a profession. So it just kind of made sense. So when I finished my bachelor's degree, I quickly went into a master's degree in teaching, teaching art education. Very good. And now you're applying your art in, in, in yeah. the area too. The full circle. Very good. Well, we only got a couple more minutes, so I want to do a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, one, again, don't forget, when can they get your new ebook, Brittany? When can oh, they this Sunday on Halloween. This Sunday, and where do they tune in to get it? At your uh, your Facebook page or your YouTube channel? Where do they get it? Yeah, anywhere that is the Drudy family, I'll be posting it. So I'll, it can be on Instagram, Facebook. Um, we have a Facebook group that you can join that's free. It'll probably be on YouTube. Um, pretty much anywhere that you follow me, you'll find it. All right, and for those of you that, that have not taken the opportunity to view uh, the free link that we gave to Brittany's uh, presentation at the 2000. 21 NHA conference, do so. It, it, it is really uh, quite inspiring. And if you like that one, and that really whets your appetite, you can get all of the videos. I think there's like 29 of them that we did from the conference. We did backstage stuff. You really get a flavor of the NHA conferences. Uh, for $67 at healthscience.org, you get them all. It's just like going to YouTube. It's a Vimeo uh, link, and you can pick and choose, and you can watch them as often as you want or as long as you want. They're really nice, high quality. So go to healthscience.org and you can do that. And at healthscience.org, you can register for the 2021, 2022 NHA conference, which will be June 24th to the 26th, where you'll once again get a chance to see Brittany and Dylan and Alan Goldhammer and Frank Sabatino and Joel Furman. And this year, the legendary Brenda Davis, the legendary Dr. Columbus Batiste, um, and, and Cleveland's own uh, 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 Jane Esselstyn, we've just added to the program, JP. So we have a really great crowd. You can register if you register at healthscience.org by, by, by the end of November. 
you get the early bird rate. And Brittany, again, I think that last year was your first conference. So why don't you just share your thoughts about what NHA conferences are like? Yeah, what a great weekend. I feel like there's there's probably no other conference like it. We hang out all weekend. You know, everyone is sitting around the table eating meals together. Um, you can walk up to the speakers and, and talk to them. You know, people are working out in the mornings together. I think uh, Dr. Joel Furman led a workout that you could work out with him. It's just such a great environment. And, you know, if you are lacking support, if you want to be inspired and be around people that do the same thing, it's the place to be because it is so inspiring and you just have that community and, you know, everyone is so lovely to spend spend the weekend with. So I'm so looking forward to June. And we are too. And uh, by the way, Brittany has a little challenge out. So I, I think it, she, I think your challenge was how many times are you in, oh. you in this magazine? So oh, I think, I just joking. Uh, yeah, I think three times when I got you it. You or your friends uh, if, if inspired by Brittany, uh, just mention that when you join the NHA. They'll get a couple. We bought actually, there she is. There's the flyer for the program right on the flyer for next year's conference right on the back. But if you mention Brittany's name and you join the NHA, you'll not only get an electronic copy of that issue, but we bought extra. You'll get a print copy. If you do that within like the next 14 days, I don't know. How, we, we, we don't have an infinite supply, but we'll, we'll send it to you free. You'll get a print copy of the magazine. That's the one thing about health science. It is very unique in the world. It's 40 pages long. It has no advertising it's an actual print publication. And when you join the NHA, you get all 42 years of back issues you can download for nothing, including the one featuring Brittany a couple of years ago with her story and, and her own recipes and all that. So Brittany, it's uh, really been a treat uh, having you here for our uh, second Power Your Health Q&A. Um, you are uh, a jewel for the NHA and for our movement. And um, I'm just thrilled at how you're inspiring so many people to adopt this lifestyle and show them how easy this really and pleasurable this all can be. So thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. All right. All right, Michelle, I'm going to turn it back to you. <laughs> Sorry about that, Mark. I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> um, thank you so much. I enjoyed that so much, Brittany. Thank you so much for coming. And I loved watching the chat and everybody just, I love Brittany. I love Brittany. She's so amazing. This is like, we love her. Um, we love her community. We love her membership. So um, if you are already, if you already signed up for this Power Your Health Q&A, then every month you are going to get the, um, the next videos and the invite to the Q&A and the reminders and all that. So you're all set. But if you haven't, join the Q&A, then I popped that uh, link in there as well. So you can click on that link and just sign up. And if you sign up today, you'll still get Brittany's uh, stuff. <laughs> and then uh, we'll send you the future things as well. So thanks so much for coming. Thanks for all your feedback, everybody. And thank you, Brittany. And we'll sign off and see you next time, the November 16th for Dr. Clapper. Bye-bye.